Welcome to worship this morning here at St. John's. It's good to be together. This is the first Sunday in what is known as ordinary time, this long green Pentecost season, when we start reading both through the Gospel of Matthew and begin a series of readings that lasts all summer through the book of Genesis, the stories of the patriarchs and matriarchs of the faith. The first reading is the text we're preaching today, the story of Abraham and Sarah and the miraculous birth of Isaac. We begin with the order for confession. The mystery of God brings the promise of life, but we doubt the Spirit's power to overcome death. The resurrection of Jesus Christ, the Son, reveals that nothing is impossible with God. Let us confess our sin and receive new life. Triune God, Holy Three, Holy One, we confess that we do not know how to look for you. We confess to you. We do not sense your nearness, and if there are angels among us, we are unaware. We do not show the hospitality to strangers that Abraham showed to you. We, we confess, confess to you. We do not trust that our hardships can be transformed by your spirit. We, we confess, confess to you. O covenant keeper, forgive us. Let us laugh with joy because your grace has made peace among us. Send us out with this good news so that others will also receive your blessing. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Christ gave his life to save us from the power of sin and death. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Trust the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God of wonder, you appear to Abraham as three persons. You reveal your fullness in your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit fills your people with hope through the peacemaking cross of Jesus. Gather us as Christ's faithful disciples and empower us with his good news in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The reading is from Genesis, chapters 18 and 21. God, in the form of three messengers, announces to Sarah and Abraham that they will have a child. Sarah, because of her advanced age, laughs at this seeming impossibility. But nothing is impossible for God, and in due course Isaac is born. Now, Sarah confesses, everyone will share in her joyous laughter. People of God, listen for the word of the Lord. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre, as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourself and after that you may pass on, since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah, and said, Make ready quickly three measures of choice flour. Knead it, and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd, took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant, who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared, and set it before them, and he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is your wife Sarah? And he said, There, in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age, and it had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I have grown old, and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time I will return to you in due season, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied it, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. He said, Oh yes, you did laugh. The Lord dealt with Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did for Sarah as he had promised. Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the time of which God had spoken to him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to his son whom Sarah bore him. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Now Sarah said, God has brought laughter for me. Everyone who hears it will laugh with me. And she said, Who would ever have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. Word of God, word of life.
Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the ninth and tenth chapters. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey, or two tunics or sandals or a staff, for laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy and stay there until you leave. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me, as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak but the spirit of your father speaking through you. And you will be hated by all because of my name, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. So, Sarah and Abraham. Can such an ancient story speak to us in the 21st century in the midst of two pandemics raging in our land? Yes, two. One caused by a microscopic spiky virus and the other the sin of racism that has oppressed black and brown and indigenous people in this country for centuries. Can an, old, can an old story that begins with the words, the Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day, truly bear the living word to us in this moment, even as we cannot come together in this tent to hear it? Yes. There is a word here for us. As we are pressed down by pandemics, as we are brought face to face with both our frailty and our faults. And it is a word that bears the defining question of faith into our midst. The question, is anything too wonderful? for the Lord. 
this question comes into a hopeless situation. In the 12th chapter of Genesis, the first book of the Bible, the creator of land and sea and sky, of cells and protons and neutrons, turns the creator's attention next to forming the human community of faith. And the creator chooses to establish this community through two people, a man named Abraham and his wife named Sarah. God calls them to leave life as they have known it in order to travel to a land that God will show them. In other words, God calls them now to walk by faith. And God promises to make of them a great nation, to make them a nation so great that they will be a blessing to all the families of the earth. But although they do indeed go as directed, the great nation promised does not come to be. No child is born to Abraham and Sarah. Years pass, then decades, until finally that promise of descendants has turned to dust dust that leaves a bitter taste in Sarah's mouth, and that is why she laughs. That is why she laughs when the Lord appears in the guise of three strangers who visit the camp and over a plate of beef and bread, cheese and milk says, I will return in due season, and Sarah will have a son. Now 90 years old, Sarah's laugh has an edge to it. That dream is over, done with. She has proven to be as barren as the dusty landscape in which she lives. And that is the moment when the Lord, disguised as a visitor at their table, asks the fundamental question of faith. Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? Is there anything impossible for God to accomplish? Now, I do not have trouble falling asleep at night, but ever since the COVID pandemic demanded that we stop assembling in person for worship, for meals, for prayer, for study, for companionship as sisters and brothers in Christ, I wake before dawn almost every morning with, to be frank, that question on my mind. Though on one calendar, this may be the second Sunday in the season of Pentecost, it is the 13th Sunday in the season of pandemic. It has been three months since we were together in this house. Though technology is a tremendous gift, I cannot through a camera or through a screen see your tears or sense your joy or your distress nor can you see or sense mine. And though we are made for community, we know that when we finally do come together again, we will no longer be able to touch one another, to share a handshake, to put an arm around a shoulder just to comfort or encourage let alone embrace one another as we share the peace of Christ. In the early hours of the morning, even though I know that, as the Sunday School song says, the church is not a building, the church is not a steeple, the church is not a resting place, the church is the people. 
I wonder if we will survive this. Like Sarah, I wonder if some things may indeed prove to be too wonderful, impossible for the Lord. And added to this viral pandemic is the reality of the second pandemic, the overwhelming truth of our complicity in structures and systems that oppress people of color, our apathy as the church in the face of injustice, and most pointedly, perhaps, our refusal to ask why our denomination, the ELCA, continues to be the whitest denomination in these United States. The sin of racism, the pandemic of racism has been revealed in stunning ways over these last weeks. And in the early hours of the morning when sleep eludes me, I wonder if we can change. I wonder if we will once again give only lip service to repentance and then retreat to our comfortable arrangements with the structures and systems we have depended upon throughout our life together. Like Sarah, I wonder if some things may indeed prove to be too wonderful, may prove to be impossible for the Lord. Yet, the word proclaims God's desire to form the community of faith and God's desire, as we hear in our gospel reading today, to heal and restore the oppressed and the marginalized do not depend entirely upon our answer to that fundamental question, is anything impossible for the Lord? Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age at the time of which God had spoken to him. Jesus summoned his disciples, certainly a less than illustrious group of fishermen and zealots, even a tax collector who worked for the occupying force of Rome and sent them to proclaim the good news, cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons, all because God will accomplish what God desires for this world, that all creation have abundant life. Abraham and Sarah, as Paul says in the book of Romans, are as good as dead. Yet God brought life and blessing to the world through them. And that unqualified, often faithless group of disciples did indeed continue Christ's work of healing and welcome for the forgotten and the, and the oppressed to the ends of the earth. So we may today, in the midst of two pandemics, trust that even now our God, who has raised Jesus from death to life, is still accomplishing the impossible. Our Lord is still doing things too wonderful that we can imagine. A church too long in league with the systems that oppress can rise by God's grace to work for justice for the marginalized and to stay at that work for as long as it takes. A church separated by sickness and even death can rise from despair to confidence in the one who called us to mission 
155 years ago and has sustained us to this day and will sustain us in the years ahead. Yes, the promise may be delayed. Look at Sarah and Abraham. And yes, the path of discipleship will be costly. Travel light, Jesus says, and expect resistance. But still, because Christ is risen and death itself has been defeated, we have confidence that there is truly nothing too wonderful for the Lord. We have confidence that nothing is impossible for the Lord to accomplish out of God's love for the world. So we take heart, my dear friends. We take heart and we say thanks be to God. Amen. With the whole church, let us now confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us now pray for our shared world. Holy One, you bring us together and call us your own. Guide your church in sharing your life-giving good news with all the world. Bless the continued work of bishops and pastors, theologians and deacons, teachers, in the bold and truthful proclamation of your reconciling grace. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. Christ. Holy One, you have called everything into being. Inspire and guide your people into the diligent stewardship of your creation. Help us, O God, in striving to restore the health and beauty of this world that you have given to us, including the mountains and the oceans, the forests and the farmlands, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and the animals of the land. Help us to use wisely and share all that you have given us for life and for well-being. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, mercy is great. Christ. Holy One, all authority in heaven and earth belongs to you. We pray that you fill the hearts and minds of all who govern every nation and people with love, compassion, and a determination to work for peace, equality, and justice for all their citizens. Instill into all people of faith the wisdom and courage to work together for an end to racism, an end to classism, an end to sexism, and all forms of hatred and ignorance that keep us from being the people that you have created us to be. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. Right. Holy One, you care for those who are harassed and helpless. We pray that you protect and defend all who are abused, heal those who are sick, feed all who hunger, empower those whose voices go unheard, and help us to respond to the pressing needs of our neighbors. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. Right. Holy One, you provide us with an abundance of gifts and resources for the work that we are called to do in your name. You have accompanied and been faithful to this faith community for 155 years of your mission and ministry, and we are grateful for your presence and pray for your grace that we can continue to faithfully and generously serve your mission to our neighbors both near and far. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. Right. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those too deep for words through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also, and also with you. Thank you. You can sit. This is the time in our service that we encourage you to reach out to sisters and brothers in Christ, wherever they may be. You can do it by the phone or email or Zoom and Share your desire that they know the peace of Christ and be knit together in community in that peace. This is also the time when we usually um, receive our offering here at St. John's and I want to thank you for your faithfulness to the financial needs of our congregation as well as all the other needs you are tending to and encourage you to give either by mail or by text. You can also go on our website and um, give by credit card even. So there are instructions at the end of this broadcast that can help you find those ways to give. And two other short things. One, if you would like to check out a hymn book so that it is a little easier to participate in worship on YouTube, you're welcome to stop here at church and check one out. Um, we have the number down in the uh, reception area and we're glad to help you with that. If you don't want to come into the building, we'll bring it out to your car. And lastly, if you'd like to join us for midweek worship this coming Wednesday evening, just email or call. You can email midweekworship at stjohnsdsm.org and get your name on that list and get the location for worship this Wednesday evening. Thank mm -hmm. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Blessed Trinity, three-part harmony, in those who sing for joy, revel in your glory, and those who cry in pain find comfort in their sorrow. Thank you for being God with us. Thank you for keeping your promises to our faith ancestors and to us. Thank you for coming near to us in your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for hope that brings life through the inpouring of your Holy Spirit. Thank you for the love you hold up before the world on the cross of Christ our Savior. Even our offerings come from the fruits of your blessings. Praise to you, O Holy God. Thank you, O Holy Three. Glory to your name, O God Most High. Amen. Amen. Please join me now in praying the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come. Your, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily, daily bread. bread. Forgive, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. evil. For, For the kingdom, the, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Receive the blessing. The three persons of the Trinity surround you. The hand of God keep you from all harm. The Spirit of God guide you in all joy. And the Son of God deliver you to eternal life. Amen. Amen. joining us for worship today. Hear this dismissal. Friends in Christ, live without fear. Live in the peace of Christ. Live in the hope of the Spirit. Let us go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.